one of the problems I've been having with the Maestro lately is it's running cold. I've got the thermostat on the way, but if it's daylight today it's not too bad. When the weather drops properly cold, it's just not warming up. All the pipes and everything are getting hot like you'd expect, but as soon as you start driving, all the heat goes away. So, I had an idea. The Maestro takes in air through two places. One's up here, and one's in a big grill underneath the bumper, down there, which you can just see here. It's quite well hidden. One of the things that you used to do, you used to see it on minis occasionally, is you'd have a radiator muff when it was very, very cold. So, I had a rummage through my supplies and I've got the materials to make one, but I never have, so I'm going to put some theory into practice. I've got this decent quality vinyl, and the plan is basically to cover that part of the car. There's a little bit more to it than just that. One of the trickier things for doing this on the Maestro is if you've got an older style car you can easily get through the grill and this piece isn't too big. On the Maestro it's, it's quite chunky so I'm probably going to make it so that I remove the grill which I think is these two screws at the top and then I fit it to the grill but I have a section in the middle I can open so if I need the extra airflow I can do that without taking the grill off because your radiator is back here and it's quite a big radiator as well for the size of the engine but as you can see the engine in here is tiny and I think all that's happening is I'm just getting too much cold air and it's just not letting it warm up properly so I'm going to do some measuring and a little diagram and I'll show you how that looks. Removing the grill really is just those two screws. That makes the design slightly easier. I was going to go very complicated, but now I don't have to. So what I'm going to do is make the muff to fit this. And there's various ways you can do this. The really, really easy way is a piece of cardboard and some cable ties, and you just do that. I wanted something a little bit nicer, and it's not something I've ever made before, so I thought it would be fun. So the idea, the, le uh, the leather or the vinyl that you use, this is to cut down on the wind shear, which is what makes your hands cold when you're on a, on a bike. And that means the cold air can't get into the front of the car, it can just go round it, which is what we're wanting. But if you just do that, and it puts stress on the fabric, and it can look a bit unsightly. So, what we'll do is the vinyl will be the outside and then there'll be a layer of padding in here and then another layer of tough fabric like a, a cotton or a canvas or something like that and I will put some eyelets in so that you can actually screw this onto the top of the grill and then these brackets at the bottom you can poke those through. So hopefully all you have to do with it is unscrew the two screws on the grill and then this just fits straight over it. I'm also going to add a little flap in the middle with some velcro so that you can actually fold it up out the way, save you taking the grill off so if you find the car's running a bit hot you can get that airflow running back through again. I thought this was going to be more involved so I'm going to take this indoors where my sewing gear is and I'm going to start putting that together. After a bit of a brainstorm and a look at how the grill works, I've got my to scale plan. The grill's actually quite small. It's only, well, there we go, 25 and a half inches wide, 6 inches deep. There were a few considerations that I had uh, on the design, which is basically that originally I was going to wrap this all the way around the grill. You can't do that. There's a seal that goes along the top that seals it against the bonnet. So. I had to accommodate for that, so we're using straps with eyelets, the screws will go through that, hold that in, and at the bottom there'll be a string or an elastic that goes around the locating pegs on the bottom of the grill. 
So to save removing the grill every time that you want to take this off, the centerpiece will be a separate flap and held up with Velcro at the top. I've got some very strong Velcro, it'll be fine. And then when you want it open, you can fold this down and these top two corners will go on these Velcro tabs at the bottom. So that will hold it open and that should be fine. And then when I eventually want to remove it from the car completely, it's just a case of undoing two screws and removing it from the grill. So my next task is cut out all the pieces and get it all sewn together. Shouldn't be a difficult job. After a little bit of faffing about, I've got the pieces together that I want and I've just got everything pinned. So, on this, that's the section that's going to open up and that goes sort of, you've got your upright here and it goes sort of, that section there will open up which isn't a lot and I know the badge is in the middle but that's fine, it's, it's all to do with controlling airflow. This piece is going to be the piece that opens up got to cut the other layers for it, yep. And then the main piece, you've got the vinyl on the outside. This is some cotton wadding left over from the Lanchester. And on the back, a heavy cotton twill, which is horrible for clothes, but great for everything else. So it's hard wearing, it's very stiff, but it's also soft enough, it's not going to damage the grill. So I need to sew round where everything's pinned, that's why it's a bit wrinkly looking, and put a little bit of I'm going to put some straight seams in here which will quilt this section. Just give it a bit more form, stop it sagging, help with the airflow reduction and I'll do the same thing on this little piece. It's quite a lot of work to do this kind of thing, I mean putting a thermostat in is quicker and easier but I've never made one of these so it'll be fun to find out how good or bad it goes. Unfortunately attempt number one has been a bit of a bust. I've been having trouble with the vinyl just walking, stretching. It it doesn't behave like I expect it to behave and this shape is too complicated. At least for my machine and my knowledge with vinyl, I don't often work with it when it comes to sewing and I think I'm just falling foul of a lack of experience. So, I went back to the drawing board, had a look at how much fabric I'd got left and I started again. This time, I've stripped out the complicated little additional flap. It's probably not necessary, I'm not going to worry about it. To stop the vinyl stretching, I noticed if I sew it so that the shiny side is out, it seems more inclined to sort of stretch and squidge about. If I do it this way round, it doesn't. So, what I changed is I've got the cotton twill and the padding, and then another layer of cotton twill, and then the vinyl. And this stopped the vinyl from stretching and distorting. So I'm going to turn this tube the right way out, and then I can put the padding lines into it and the straps. It's got quite dark now, unfortunately, so I probably won't finish this until tomorrow. We'll see how I get on. After a lot of trial and error, turns out my sewing machine hates that vinyl. So I ruined the prototype and the second simplified attempt, it just wouldn't go through the vinyl properly. And I don't have enough material to do it again. So I went to plan C, which is some cardboard. And I've just gaffer taped two pieces together and stuck them inside the grill. Which is going to do exactly the same job. Um, and it's probably what I should have done to start with. So I'm going to go and put that on the car and we'll give it a trial run at some point. It's very dark at the moment so I can't go out and show you. One of the issues that the Maestro's had pretty much since I got it is it runs cold and I can't get it to warm up you have to drive around quite a bit and it gets up to about quarter gauge and no hotter. The heater's put out, I've got decent uh, temperature all across the radiator in all the heater hoses so it's probably the thermostat. 
Now, I've already had a go at making a muff, and I kind of failed at that. My sewing machine doesn't like the fabric, so I found the alternative solution of some cardboard, which I didn't want to do, but never mind. And the thermostat finally arrived, so I'm going to have a go at putting that in, and we'll see how smoothly this goes. Your thermostat lives here, I think. And I've already been warned that because of dissimilar corrosion, you have an issue with these studs getting stuck in this housing. So I'm hoping it doesn't come down to hammers, but there's only one way you ever find out. Helps if your ratchet goes the right way. I have no service history with this car, so I don't actually know whether or not this has been done. Well, they're coming undone fairly easily at least. So that's promising. It's a bit cold today as well, my hands are a bit cold. Looks like they may have been greased, so that bodes well. I don't think I need to remove that bracket. I suspect this should just knock out. Oh yeah, wow. So much of that being stuck on. That was a surprise. No, I'm gonna have to remove that bracket. easy. Oh, that would do it. Probably should have drained that first. Oh well. Not to worry. you see the problem? There's no thermostat at all. So that certainly won't be helping. Oh, there's nothing there. Right then. I'm 
one I've ordered didn't come with a gasket or anything, so I might have to make one. But this is the one I've got. Uh, it's got a little jiggle pin in it, which is this little thing here. Now normally I just copy what I took out, but there's nothing to copy, so... Not really sure where this sits in. I'm guessing it sits in there. I'll go and have a look in the book just in case. Join me on the workbench. Bonnet to the princess. I removed the remains of two gaskets. And this is the I don't know what you call it. It's like a spacer thing. Because somebody's obviously cared about maintenance on this car, missing thermostat aside, everything is coming apart really easily. It's actually really nice. So I did originally try and trace the remains of one of the gaskets, but it's a bit wibbly wobbly, I wasn't very happy, so there's a couple of different ways you can do this, you can do it with a hammer but given how small this is I'm just going to draw around it with a pen and then cut it out and then copy it I was expecting the thermostat I bought to come with gaskets, but it doesn't, so it just means a little bit extra time doing this. Not the end of the world. A skinnier pen. Oh well, this will do. Since I only removed two gaskets, I'm only going to make two to go back on. I'm hoping this paper's thick enough. Should be. The advantage to them greasing everything means that things have been very easy to come apart, but I did miss my pen. So, there we go. I'm going to trim these out and then we will get them fitted. There we go, two gaskets made. I haven't got any hole punches. Not uh, not the stick and hit it with a hammer type, so I'm relying on this trusty old thing and I can't find the scissors I wanted, so I'm using some bandage scissors, but they're very good. They've got a pointy end and a blunt end. They work quite well, so I can now get this all reinstalled and with a the thermostat in the car it might actually warm up properly. That would be good. Right, I've cleaned up the thermostat housing plump the thermostat in. It has a little recess that it sits in so you can't really get that wrong. And it fits nicely which is good. I've also cleaned up the bracket and you can't get this one wrong either because it has a little recess in the thermostat side. So that side ends up being nice and flush. And that's, I'll have a gasket either side of this piece. Uh, and then the whole thing should bolt down. I hope.
do the thing I did before putting everything back together. I've obviously cleaned all the surfaces off. I also put, oh, yeah. you get a piece of kitchen towel and just twist it around like that and drop it down the bolt hole. You don't need to push it or anything and you just wicks all the water out. It stops your bolts doing stupid things when you put those back in. do this get out of that pipe. Should use a socket on this, it'd be a lot easier. I'll do it when I do it up. really understand why this is all multi-layered but I imagine there's some reason for it. Yeah. And I've got all of my bolt holes too small so I just need to open these up a bit. Got those holes enlarged, uh, which I really should have shown you how to do. Okay, so gasket paper, hole puncher, one hole, but it's too small. So fold the gas paper, gasket paper in half, but don't crease it, just fold it lightly. And Oh, this feels weird doing this. I'm stood behind the camera with my hands in front of it, so this is not going to go well. But you sort of go around your, you line your little hole, and then, hey presto, larger hole. So if I stick a standard one in next to it, so there you go. And if, you, if you've cut a hole and you just need to make it a tiny bit bigger, that's the best way I know to do it when you haven't got anything other than a pair of scissors. So, yeah. Now what I've done with the thermostat housing is it's in three pieces. So thermostat in the bottom and then a paper gasket. And then that spacer thing, another paper gasket and then the top piece. I found it easier to put the spacer and the top piece with the bolts and gaskets all together as one thing and then put that on the car. The bolts seem to hold everything together sort of loosely so you can get it all lined up. Just hope nothing comes out of alignment while I do this. feel like a very odd solution to a very specific problem. I'm not really sure why you'd want a bracket on this bit. But I guess it serves a purpose of some sort. Finger tight. I always like to do things up finger tight first to make sure I've not cross threaded things. Especially when my hands are cold, because you just haven't got that dexterity that you would normally have. And it 
can be very, very easy to make a hash of things. The camera's right where I want to stand at the moment. Wow, this is being annoying. There we go. If you've ever wondered what it's like trying to record jobs like this, it's like having a small neighbor ch neighbor's child just in the way, not asking questions, just staring at you. The talk setting I'm using is feels about right. One thing I've learned over the years is talk settings are great on important stuff, but if it's just something like this, if you go to the factory talk setting, chances are it'll either leak everywhere immediately or you'll crack things. So I just go with whatever feels about right. Wow, that pipe's hard to get on now. I have a feeling I've put that on, rotated one round. Hmm. Earlier I was saying how this ridge in the top is for um, sealing against the thermostat. It's not. I think this... I don't want to say anything and get it wrong because I'm not in a position to do the research to confirm. But if you have it this way up, this water pipe reaches comfortably, but if you do it with a ridge on the bottom, the water pipe's then over here and blocked by this bracket, and you can't get the, the rubber pipe on it, so it has to go it has to go that way up. It can't go the other way because you can't get the pipe on if you do, so I assume that means in some applications you put the thermostat in the top and not in the block. The book suggests putting it in the block like I've done, so I hope that's correct. Uh, maybe you put it up here if you want the car to run at a slightly different temperature? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm lost on this one. Anyway, I'm going to bolt it all back together again and bring you back when I'm done. There we go, all back together. Uh, tightened all the little bits and pieces up, so I'll top up the coolant. It didn't lose very much. It does need a change, really. Can't really see in there. Um, it does need a coolant change. It could do with an oil change. I'm just holding off at the minute because what's in there is not terrible. Uh, I have a rocker cover gasket to go on. I'm not doing that today. Also down here, you see this this rod here. And over here, there's a little one there, shorter one. The gear, they're the gear change rods, and the gear change in this car is dreadful. I was warned about it. I managed to find some new old stock ones, so I'm going to plonk those on at some point. Hopefully that will sort that out and take out the play. It could be some bushes or something as well. So I'm going to tidy up, and then I'm going to give this a run up and see if it's watertight. Fingers crossed. Oh, it's running. And there's no obvious big water leaks. The only problem I've got, as you can hear, is the exhaust blows quite bad today. Um, but I finally found out where that is. It's right underneath the engine. So that'll just be a join that needs doing. Hopefully it's not going to require lots of expensive bits. So the, what you can see coming up there, it's on full choke at the minute because it's very cold. That's all coming off the blow on the exhaust underneath. So once it warms up, it stops doing that. And of course, once it stops choke, it's not making, well, that. It's not oil, you can smell it's running rich.
the really good thing is the temperature gauge is actually moving at idle. And before, obviously, with there being no thermostat in, I was getting nothing at all. So I'm happier about that. That means the car will probably warm up more normally, which will be better for the car in general. And it means the heaters will actually be warm when it's cold. Because I've been driving around with gloves on out of necessity rather than style. So yeah, we're getting there. We're narrowing the problems down and I did hit the odometer since I got the car. So I've actually done more than that since I got the car and it's been fine. It's, you know, me fixing these things is just me being picky and wanting the car to be right. So it's not necessary. I could leave it exactly as it is. I could leave it without the thermostat. I just want it to be better. Yeah, it does not like being off choke yet. It, it has, the temperature is dropping quite quickly, so. Um, once it warms up, it is fine. It's not chuggy like this. I think the timing's off. I think it would benefit probably from new spark plugs, new leads, you know, the usual things. It would definitely benefit from having that exhaust fixed. So that's something to look into, maybe by somebody else, because I hate doing exhausts. So there we go. It's been a fairly successful job. I mean, I'm sat here watching the temperature gauge climb like it would do normally. I can't see any leaks from the housing. Uh, there was a lot of steam when I first started it because everything was covered in water from me not draining of the system because I was being lazy. So after this, I can look at doing some of the other jobs I've got parts for. I do want to sort out the timing. I do want to check the valve clearances, new gasket, uh, new rocker cover gasket, that sort of thing. So I shall see you in another video when hopefully we'll be making this car just a little bit better. Can't make it any worse. Just a quick addendum, now that he's warmed up, not as chuggy, actually idling much happier. It can take a while sometimes and I've not used him in a day or two, so it just needs to be something with this car that likes to be out every day, and I normally am. Temperature gauge has been hovering around about a quarter, which seems a lot healthier, especially with it sat at idle. Here we go, off choke. And then the, the weird thing with Maestro's where they've got um, three lights for the handbrake, which is normal. Um, somebody did explain it to me once, and I'll have a look in a brochure and find out why they do that. But. Yeah, once it's warmed up, it is fine. It idles away quite happily, the exhaust shuts up. And it's fairly happy, really. It could be better, and it will be.